Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. In case you weren't invited, the White House Correspondents' Dinner took place over the weekend. For the third year in a row, Donald Trump was invited but took a pass and didn't show up. That has never happened in the long history of the dinner. Presidents always show up. They always throw in a tuxedo and head downtown to suck up to the White House Correspondents' Association. They don't want to do that. They hate going, every one of them. All presidents deeply despise the news media. But they make themselves go. They have no choice. It's a hostage situation. If you blow off the dinner, the press will punish you, guaranteed. They won't admit it, of course. They won't say it's personal. They'll make up some story. Here, for example, is Jeff Zucker's spokesman claiming that not going to a media dinner is the same as attacking the media. Say what you will about the press. This is an event that honors the First Amendment. Yes, that's what it's about. It's an awards dinner and a fundraiser. In the past, presidents have always shown up, uh, even if they were angry at the press at any given time. It's yet another example of, of what we're seeing. This administration's attack against the media it takes many forms. Yeah, One does. form is the president having a rally uh, this Saturday instead of attending the dinner. <laughs> Dumb people are so self-confident. Have you noticed that? It's almost like there's a self-esteem, competence, reverse access. I think that's real. Anyway, they're telling us that going to your own event instead of our event is a form of harassment. You know what's not harassment, according to CNN? Spying on former Fox reporter James Rosen and his parents because you don't like what he's covering. The Obama administration actually did that. And then Obama went to eight separate White House Correspondent Association dinners. Nobody ever denounced him as immoral. Obama hated reporters, by the way. Most people do hate reporters for good reason. But reporters loved him back anyway. They agreed with his politics. That's what matters. Watch what happens when they don't agree with your politics. I still separate my career into the period before February of 2017 and what came afterwards. And that's because February 2017 is when the President of the United States called us the enemies of the people. I felt it was time that we reset this dinner and put the focus a little more squarely on, on journalism and a little more squarely on the First Amendment and a little more on the people, the men and women who helped to hold the most powerful political institution in American life to account. Ladies and gentlemen, to the First Amendment. Now, I'm delighted to make a spirited case tonight for the First Amendment. We now have to fight hard for basic truths we once took for granted. Like every future president, Washington felt maligned and misunderstood by the press but he never generalized that into a vendetta against the institution. I think you're doing noble work to preserve democracy at a time when a rising tide of misinformation masquerading as news threatens to make a mockery of the First Amendment. Donald J. Trump is not the first and won't be the last American president to create jitters about the First Amendment. But what is happening today is perhaps even more insidious, a relentless campaign against the very credibility of the news media. This is a glorious tradition. You folks are part of it, and we can't have politicians trampling on it with impunity. People are doubting the news media. That's wrong. You're seeing misinformation masquerading as news, they're telling us. And actually, they're right. We have seen a lot of that recently. How about the last two years of Russia coverage on CNN, for example? Michael Cohen met secretly with Russian spies in Prague. John Don Jr. is about to be indicted. The Steele dossier is entirely real. They told us all of that and much more, all of it wrong and stupid and totally dishonest. The New York Times, the Washington Post won Pulitzers for what turned out to be misinformation masquerading as news. Last Saturday night would have been a perfect moment, actually, to apologize for that debacle and return the prizes they won. But no, nobody apologized. Nobody returned a Pulitzer. Instead, they celebrated themselves. No surprise there. That's what they do. What was odd, though, was hearing them talk about free speech. The First Amendment is, in fact, under ferocious attack, really more than any time in the last 50 years at least. And yet the people in that room don't seem to notice. Where were these same people last summer when the big tech companies colluded to silence broadcaster Alex Jones? Alex Jones, he's bad. CNN literally led the effort to make him be quiet. Jeff Zucker doesn't agree with Alex Jones' political views. Therefore, he thinks Alex Jones shouldn't be allowed to talk. So Zucker shut him up by force. Did anyone at Saturday's dinner mention any of that? And where were they when Facebook and Twitter blocked ads supporting Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn because they criticized abortion? Where were they when Tommy Robinson went to prison in the UK for having unfashionable views about immigration? 
Where were they when James Damore got fired and then slandered by Google for questioning the company's diversity theology? Where were they when Peter Vlaming lost his job teaching in Virginia because he wouldn't use male pronouns to describe a female student? Did any of the First Amendment defenders, here's the First Amendment, they say, at the dinner on Saturday say a single word about any of this? Of course they didn't. Their job, they say, is to hold the powerful to account. But when given the chance to push back against the truly powerful, the actually powerful, the, we're not even kidding powerful, Google, Amazon, Facebook, PayPal, do they say anything? Ever? No, of course not. They suck up every single time. They suck up to power because that's who they are. Dutiful toadies to the powerful. Defending class interests and pretending it is principle. Fine, that's who they are. Just don't lecture us about speech, please.